33 ways to hide your stuff in Minecraft. At least I hope it's 33, I'm not that good at counting. Today's video is all about protecting your hard earned Minecraft items from people who potentially want to steal them. Now unfortunately I can't do much about people using the various modifications such as x-ray mod to locate your chests and things, but if everyone is playing by the rules, nobody is cheating, then this should protect your items. So let's get things started with 7 really obvious ones. Don't play on a Minecraft server. Nobody can steal your stuff if you're playing in single player. Unless somebody steals your computer, logs into your Minecraft world and starts using your items. That's quite extreme though. But outside of that incredibly unlikely scenario, this really is the most secure thing that you could do. You know, we've peaked early. It's all downhill from here. Bury your valuables. Absolutely no redstone required with this one. Just find a good plot. Make sure that you take note of the coordinates before you do this. Dig a hole. And then there we go. Your items are stored safely underground. And then when you want to cover them back up, just to cover them back up. Store them in an ender chest. Yeah, I mean, this one kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? Put all of your valuable items inside of an ender chest. You can have up to 27 shulker boxes in here. This really is more than you'd ever need. It is a tiny bit boring though, isn't it? Be poor. Nobody can steal your valuable items if you don't have any valuable items to steal. Really, this is a faultless strategy. The old store them behind the painting trick, a staple of hidden item videos since around about 2011, you just place a painting on some signs and then you have access to the chest behind it. It is a very good technique, but just know that the entire Minecraft community knows about it. So if you have a painting like this, just sat in your base, people are gonna look behind it. Don't store them anywhere. Someone like me couldn't possibly do this because I'm utterly useless and Minecraft would die immediately and lose all of my stuff. But some people are incredibly talented at the game. So if you're fairly certain that you're not going to die, you might as well just keep your items on you. If somebody wants to steal your valuables, they'll have to pry them from your cold, dead hands. Attach them to a donkey because let's be honest, nobody would really see that coming. You know, I think even the donkey is surprised at this one. So there we go. That is our incredibly obvious starting seven. If you want the absolute simplest way to hide your items, then these right here, these will serve you well. So if that's all you came for, then congratulations, you can stop watching the video now. Right. Now that all the boring people have left, let's crack on with the fun stuff. Spruce and barrels. So here we have a bit of a mock-up of the front of a house. And I think we can all agree, it looks rather lovely. I like the block palettes. And if we just take a look down at the bottom here, you might be able to spot if you're really, really, like, sharp-eyed. You know, you are, you are James Bond, the Sherlock Holmes of Minecraft. You might be able to spot that these are, in fact, barrels, so we can store all of our valuable items right out the front of our house, hiding away in plain sight. The Impenetrable Fortress. Now, this will work very well if your base is underground and you have various different caverns, as long as you have a decent supply of chorus fruit, because this does take quite a few attempts but we just went straight in. That, I'm surprised. So I'm now inside of this thing that there is absolutely no entrance to. We've got access to all of the valuable items and things. This could be like a secure vault. And then of course, when we want to leave, we just have to eat our chorus fruit once again and we pop out, out to the outside world. Decorative buttons. Now that I've dipped my toe into building, I understand that people occasionally place buttons without needing the button. I know, I, I still think that's weird. So in this situation, I've taken the decorative button and I've made it a normal, regular functioning button. So you can see when we press this, this decorative button right here, we get access to two barrels, which allows us to store a bunch of valuable items. And obviously the redstone for this is just ridiculously simple because we're connecting up a button to a piston. I mean, doesn't get much easier than that. The warm hand hidden chest. You're definitely going to need your thermal gloves for this one because our chest is hidden back behind this rather lovely looking fireplace right here. You know, on the previous one where I said it doesn't get much simpler than that, well, yeah, I think this is quite a lot simpler than that. There's absolutely no redstone involved. The chest is just, is just down at the bottom there. Torch holder twister. I've always absolutely loved the way that this little building trick looks. We've got a torch that is placed on this block here, and then we've got an item frame with an anvil on the inside of it. And it actually looks like the anvil is holding the torch in place. It's really, really cool. But you see this torch holder has got a bit of a hidden secret. If we just twist it, you can see that this block drops back and we get access to a handful of barrels. So we've got some secret storage up at the top there. And then when we want to hide away the secret storage, all we have to do is spin the item frame around until it goes back to its original position, then everything closes up. All we're doing is taking a signal out the back of the block where the item frame is placed on. And as we rotate that item frame around, this signal strength gets stronger powering this block right here, which will then cause our piston to retract. There is a world download down in the description, but this one you should be able to build for yourselves. Sneaky extra chests. You see, the people who are trying to steal your stuff are going to be so preoccupied looking through all of your actual storage, that they're not going to notice what's behind it. If you're paying a lot of attention, and you would have to be paying a lot of attention here 
you might notice that there's a slight difference in tone between the wooden blocks here and the blocks that are behind the chest. And that is because these are actually shulker boxes. They're dark brown shulker boxes that I've placed behind our storage system. Now, if you're wondering why I've left a line of wooden planks, it's because those are the ones that are in line with our eye line. So I felt like if you were going to notice anything weird, it would probably be the ones that are directly in front of you. So as long as they look normal, then these kind of look normal as well. But of course, there's a ton of different ways to do this, a bunch of different block palettes, and I'm sure some of you have got some really good ideas. The not so obvious button. If you place a stone button on top of stone, then it can be really difficult to spot it. Mine is hidden away inside here, and it reveals a secret barrel that stores all of my items. Now, obviously, in this situation, we're literally looking at a five by five area of stone, so it's quite easy to spot where it is. But if you imagine this over an entire cliff wall, you're gonna be hard pushed to find it. And of course, a huge benefit of using a design like this is once again, the redstone is about as simple as it gets, as you're just connecting a button to a piston. The very warm hand hidden chest. Just like the fireplace that we saw earlier, this one is going to require your thermal gloves because underneath this lava here, I have got a whole bunch of hidden barrels, some of which I've actually forgotten to put valuables in. I am a professional YouTuber, but you get the picture. Underneath this lava right here, we've got a bunch of barrels that store all of our valuables. There's absolutely no red stone involved and I have just looked apparently barrels aren't flammable so even if you have fire tick on the server that you're playing they shouldn't catch fire however if they do and you lose all of your stuff it's not my fault with my lawyers satisfied let's move on to the empty barrel now this is a bit of an interesting one I have to say it does use quite a bit of redstone but the idea is is that when someone's looking through people's chests for things to steal they tend to open them quickly and if there's nothing in it they'll move on well, the idea behind this is that it stays empty for a little while, but then it gets populated with the valuable item, which is our shulker box right here. Now, when we're done with this thing, we can just pick it up and chuck it back into the system and it will immediately be taken out. And that is all achieved using this redstone circuitry out the back here. Now, I have to say it does look quite complicated, but I can promise you it's pretty simple. We've got an observer which detects when the barrel is opened. Then we've got a pulse extender, which adds the delay into the circuit. And then round the back here, we have just got a little bit of circuitry to lock and unlock the hoppers, which allows the valuables to travel into the barrel and then eventually travel out of the barrel. And of course, if you want a closer look, well done, load down in the description. The Old Faithful. People who have watched my YouTube channel for a long time will definitely recognize this one. We place down a redstone torch and we get access to the barrel. I mean, how simple is that? Redstone torch, it gets broken and we have access to valuable items hidden under this rather nice looking staircase. This circuit is known as a redstone torch key and it relies on the fact that this piston right here will be powered by the redstone torch that is placed diagonally to it. And unfortunately, because this is quite a strange and broken game mechanic, it does not work in Bedrock Edition. But my goodness, does it work well in the Java Edition, the Pathfinder. Now, if there's one issue that I take with things like redstone torch keys is they require me to bring a redstone torch with me everywhere, just in case I wanna access my valuables. Whereas something like this system, it literally just requires a shovel and everyone carries a shovel. All I have to do is right click on this dirt block right here and then I get access to my valuable items. And you just heard there is some redstone going on because as I access my barrel, this path block is being converted from being a path back into being a dirt block. So then my tracks can be covered because if you just leave a random path block out in the wilderness somewhere, that's gonna look pretty suspicious. But this redstone system solves that problem by literally covering everything up for you. So as we're accessing our valuables, the issue is being solved. Everything is being covered up. Everything is hidden away. I love this. And redstone wise, it's ridiculously simple. We've just got an observer, which is looking into our barrel, which detects when the barrel is open, that retracts the block. And then when we close the barrel, that then pushes the block back across. So that is how we are converting our path block. This is definitely one of my personal favorites. Cheaty ceiling. This is a rather nice looking wall. I think we can all agree it wouldn't look out of place inside of a base. But if I just walk up to this edge here, hold down W and fire an ender pearl, you can see that I've actually popped out on the other side and I can gain access to some hidden chests. Now there isn't anything special going on here with the fence posts or the trap doors or anything. This literally works in any situation where you have blocks in this formation, just hold down W, right click with an ender pearl and you're up on the other side. It's a very broken game mechanic and I like that. Weird nether portals. So as I'm sure most of you already know, one block traveled in the nether equates to eight blocks traveled in the overworld. So when you're linking up nether portals, you need to take this mathematics into account and it turns out it's incredibly accurate. It's so accurate in fact that you can actually change what nether portal you pop out of 
depending on where you stand in the nether portal. Now, I don't know about you, but when I walk into a nether portal, I always just walk straight into the wall behind it. So if I do that in this situation, I pop out into my survival base. Yeah, it's not the best base in the world. And that's because I've spent all of my resources on this secret vault, which I can only access by standing on the very edge of the nether portal. And then you can see... I've actually popped out in here. Now this is achieved by having two nether portals in the overworld eight blocks apart in the direction of which your nether portal is facing. So if you imagine this is our nether portal in the nether, if we're standing right on this edge of the nether portal, then we'll go to the vault. And if we're standing on this edge of the nether portal, then we'll make our way to the survival base. The wishing fountain. Now just as a warning, this is absolutely overkill, but I love it. So here we have a secret key that I throw into this fountain right here. And then you can see that our valuable items are dropped down through the same fountain so we can get access to these. And when we're done with them, we just throw the shulker box back up into the fountain, it gets shot up, and it will be returned back into the little storage system that is up at the top there. I think we can all agree, this is about the coolest thing ever. But it's also not the simplest of contraptions in this video. In fact, I think it might just be the most complicated. The not so decorative barrels. After a couple of designs that have probably caused a handful of headaches, I think it's time we take it back a notch. And we have some barrels that look like they're just here for decoration. Apart from this one right here, with our valuables stored inside of it. A little bit like the decorative buttons, these piles of barrels are things that you often see in people's builds and they're often empty. And if someone is trying to steal your stuff, generally they'll kind of check a few, get the picture and move on. But if you have a barrel that's partially obscured and maybe in a slightly more challenging place to get access to, that's probably a good place to put your stuff. The crawl space. Now this is like the Minecraft painting trick 2.0. So here we have some trapdoors. If we just squash ourselves into the crawling position, and we can actually make our way through this gap and gain access to our valuables chest. Once again, I would be a little bit wary of people knowing this trick, especially if you have trapdoors on either side of your painting, but it's definitely more secure than having your chest out in the open. The Hawkeye. The average Minecraft player is generally carrying a bow and arrow, so that makes it incredibly useful for accessing hidden items. And one way in which we can do it is by putting a minecart right in the corner of some blocks. And when you shoot it with an arrow, it will actually break the minecart which allows us to access things like hidden chests. Now, if we were in survival mode, that minecart would just be sat on top of the detector rail and that would allow us to replace the minecart, closing everything up. And this is literally achieved by connecting up a detector rail to a pair of pistons. It's about as simple as it gets. This one is not about as simple as it gets, but it's still definitely cool. We activate it by just throwing any old item on the floor down here. And you can see that this six by two area that's not six by two. It's six blocks. It's three by two. Drops down into the ground, revealing a whole bunch of barrels. This is like hidden armory. Now the item that we threw onto the floor has actually ended up in this barrel here. So we can grab that in case it was something valuable. And then when we want everything to pop back up, we just throw another item onto the floor and everything returns. Now the redstone for the armory is a double piston extender connected up to this three by two area of slime blocks. And the way that I've done the item pickup system is we've got a comparator connected up to this hopper right here, which detects when an item travels through the hopper. And the way that we pick up an item from above the ground is I've actually got a hopper minecart inside of the block. And this is achieved by first placing in a hopper minecart, breaking the minecart rail, and then grabbing a grass block, placing a piston facing downwards, and then finally just powering that, and that hides everything away. The confuser. People don't like touching complicated redstone contraptions, and sometimes they find them scary, but we can actually use this to our advantage by hiding away our valuable items inside the circuitry. If we take a look inside this dropper here, which is actually useful for the redstone circuit, we've actually hidden away our diamonds. And because not many people are brave enough to poke around down here, they're gonna be pretty safe. The redstone circuit doesn't even necessarily need to work. It just needs to look sufficiently complicated so that if you hide your diamonds within it, they're probably not going to be found. The bookworm. Lecterns are pretty cool in that they output different redstone signals depending on what page you're on. So here I've written a book. So it's a lot of pleases. It is a lot of pleases. And uh, yeah, that is the important page because that reveals a pair of secret barrels. Now, obviously, if you were to do this for yourself, you would probably write slightly different things inside of the book, but this is a good example. And this one is achieved using a redstone signal strength detector. Now with one lectern, I must admit, is not particularly secure. Whereas if you had two lecterns that are connected up to an AND gate that would then review your storage, you're gonna have a lot of possible combinations there and it's gonna be very secure. Like the chances of someone getting the right page on both of the books is one in 225. 
that's secure. The cluttered floor. Now that I've kind of poked my head into the building world, I've noticed that people, people like building up floors like this. You know, ones that you absolutely would not want to have in your house. I mean, imagine this. There's a half meter drop. There's a half meter drop in my floor. And I'm meant to like this. But I have to say in Minecraft, it kind of makes sense. It does look pretty. And one thing that you see quite often is trap doors in the floors. But it's quite easy to just chuck a barrel underneath the trap door. And then that's where you can put your valuable items. I mean, it's as simple as that. The cheaty boat. Just like Ender Pearls, boats are slightly broken. If I place a boat in this corner, drive it into the corner, and then jump out of it while holding W, I will end up on the other side of the wall, giving us access to our lovely items. Now, the only thing that I would say about this one is it does appear to be directional. It worked for me going northeast, so it might be worth doing some mock-ups and things before you commit to any designs. With that being said, this is so simple that if it doesn't work, it's not exactly the end of the world, is it? The campfire gap. I'm not entirely sure what I've built here. It's like a combination of a barbecue and a fire pit and maybe a seating area as well. But it kind of works. It kind of looks good. It's very late right now. So maybe my eyes are deceiving me. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft today, but I'm, I'm sort of liking this. Build style aside, it is actually holding a bit of a secret in this gap right here. And you have to be very good to actually find it. In this gap between the stair and the campfire, we can gain access to a hidden chest. Under the dining table. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Here we have a standard interior kitchen setup, except underneath the chairs and in the gap, between the top of the block and the piston where the piston is extended we have got a set of barrels in which we can access valuable items i would say i'd use this but i never build interiors so i don't think i ever will the beat maker i'm very particular with my music and i have to say i really like this new song that they recently added in minecraft 1.18 and if i put it into the jukebox i actually gain access to my hidden items. Jukeboxes are very similar to lecterns in that they give different redstone signal strengths depending on what music disc is on the inside of them. So pick your favorite music disc and then you get both a good song and also your valuables. I mean, what more could you want? That sounds like the perfect day. And my final tip for keeping your items safe is if you're playing on a server with someone who looks like this, right? Then your items probably aren't safe. 